After smashing through the competition in a contender's gauntlet last month, Montana Black gets his shot at the Rising Generation League Championship this week on CWF Worldwide. Okay, so I don't know if any of you guys know how to work Twitter or social media or anything, but all I've heard from CWF, from Brad, from really any of you is how can I tap a T-Rex? How can I tap out such a big guy? Because I'm the man! I'm the RGL champion! That's why! I'm better than anybody back here on this show! It is a super show because I'm the RGL champion! So Montana Black! Get your ass out here and let's go! The following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 15 minute time limit and it is for the Rising Generation League Championship. Introducing first, the challenger, weighing in at 315 pounds, he is from the George South Wrestling School. CWF Worldwide, Brad Stutz and Cecil Scott in the booth. Cecil, I'm going to ask you the same question that has been asked all week long on social media ever since this title bout was announced. How do you tap out a T-Rex? Man, I don't know if you can. I mean, this is such a, a huge on, man. man. I get it. You're bigger than me. Pull it down. And, you know, both men, you know, kind of the, obviously in the RGL division for fighting for the RGL title, you know, low on experience. So it's going to really come down to who can use their biggest strength more effectively for their experience level. Absolutely. Size and strength are going to be in the camp of Montana Black, the T-Rex. Six oh. foot six, 315 pounds by my math. Montana Black outweighs the RGL by 130 pounds. That's a cool J, but he outweighs the RGL champion by. Kane Justice taking a break on the outside. Our longtime worldwide viewers know Kane Justice started here at the CWF Mid Atlantic Dojo. Felt like he was not progressing fast enough to his liking and went on to study judo. Oh boy, go on the man bun. Yes, he does. Oh, smart move. Justice has used those judo tactics very wisely in a short career up to an incredible including that arm submission, the twist ending, that brought him the Rising Generation League Championship. Cecil, is it safe to say that Kane Justice lives and dies by that arm work? Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say because every high profile match we've seen him in, that's what he goes to. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, it kind of telegraphs what you're going to do. But if you're good at changing things up, I mean, it could be very effective. Montana Black, big, bad, and he covers the ground he walks on. Mm. 
315 pounds just crashing into justice. And it's a solid 315, too. This is not a, a sloppy 315. Justice fired into the buckle. Hey, whoa, Kane got out of the way there, but Montana stopped himself. Kane Justice in a different position than what he's been at. He's not used to facing somebody this size. Charging in, maybe going for a monkey flip. Montana Black just way too strong again, and Kane goes to the eyes. And now goes to the arm after going to the eyes, and Kane once again, thanks to nefarious means, has the advantage. Justice cranking on that arm. Montana Black has got the, the long arms. He's got the reach. It's in, it's in his advantage to keep Justice away from that arm. It is in Kane Justice's advantage. Oh, to not get suplexed by a 300 pound man. To not let something like that happen. Cover two. And coming into this, I was just really interested to see if Kane can manipulate someone of this size. He's not faced a man this big yet. No, see, Bear, you've been in there against men that outweigh you by 100 pounds or more. Even just him leaning on you in a cover like that, it, it's different than being covered by a normal man. Yeah, absolutely it is. You got to push that weight off of your chest. And it takes a lot more effort than it normally would. Oh, no. Not a good idea. I'll tell you this from years of fighting Ron McBride, you don't chop a bigger man. Kane is giving it all he's got, Captain. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, no. The T Rex. Oh, no. Just a slap. It's a meaty thud in the chest. Oh. This title reign may be coming to an end here. Of course, Montana Black smashed through all potential challengers in a contender's scramble match to earn this title opportunity. I gotta think Kane Justice would have rather anyone else on the planet won that matchup other than Montana Black at this point. Yeah, because it doesn't matter what kind of great mat wrestler you are, if you can't get the man horizontal on his back, it doesn't matter. That was a slam from almost seven feet in the air. Oh, 315 on the leg drop. Mm, just barely negotiated that shoulder up. Now we are getting a good look at the resilience of young Kane Justice here. Yes, we are. Really the first time that he has really, really been tested against a bigger man, like you pointed out. He's been in there with the likes of Dirty Daddy, some other people that he matches up well with physically, even somebody like Chet Sterling. Mm. Whoa, went too high. But he's never been in there. Woo against a monster like Montana Black. Yeah, he's wisely associated himself with much bigger men. Montana going for the cover, perhaps just laying on him with all that weight. And that was an inexperienced move. He rolled him the wrong way. I believe Montana Black believed, quite frankly, that he could just lay on Justice and win the title here. Yeah, maybe smother him out. Absolutely. Big suplex. Again, this is being dropped from seven, eight feet in the air. Oh, man, look at the strength. Justice's feet almost touching the ceiling. Oh, is he? He's trying to hook a Kamira here. He went down, he's trying to hook that arm. The arm may be too powerful. He can't get him. He can't get him. Oh, no. Oh, what a crash. He tried the Kamira, but wasn't strong enough. Suplexed him down. Now we see Montana Black favoring that arm. Now we will find out if enough damage was done to that arm for Kane Justice to really have a pronounced advantage here. Yeah, he was able to crank on it a little bit. I don't think he got the hold he wanted, but he did some damage. Justice again creating space. That's smart. He has taken a beating. He's creating space. He grabs the belt. Going for the Rising Generation League Championship. He may just be saying to heck with it. A count out. Justice will retain the title on a count out. He's taking a walk. Yes, he is. Oh, he's being hunted, though. He is being hunted by Montana Black. Montana Black does not want the count out. He can't win the championship that way. He can only win the title in the ring. And that's exactly where he is forcing Kane Justice back towards. Yeah, Kane just out of desperation. They're trying to fight back. We got to get that belt out of the ring. Referee Josh Barrett needs to physically wrestle that belt away from Justice here. Justice trying to get disqualified. Didn't work. I love it when they call me Big Choppa. Oh my God. Montana Black may light up Kane Justice's insides. Kane's got 
got the arm. He's working on that arm. Kane is trying to get the arm. Kane is trying to get the arm. Oh, he's got him. He's got him. Kane Joseph has got the arm trapped. He's got the arm trapped and he gave it up. He had to firmly tap out. He, he gave up. Montana Black gave it up when Kane Justice got a hold of that arm. He was gnawing on it like a dog on a bone. And Kane Justice remains the rising Generation League champion. Seven minutes, 31 seconds. I told you! Still rising Generation League champion. I see Things that make people talk about you. No matter what, it's still gonna hurt. Yeah. This is the one time fatal four-way action bout. Ten minute time limit. Please welcome out number one, Cam Carter. with four of the top prospects from four different North Carolina training facilities. Cam Carter out of the Firestar Pro Wrestling Academy locked it up with Jacob Ryan out of the USIWF training facility. Cecil Scott, this will be fast and furious as all four look to make a huge impression on our worldwide audience. Yeah, this is the place to do it. We got this tall, lanky Patrick Scott, who's actually my son, believe it or not. The top prospect out of Steve Carino's Carolina's Wrestling Academy, Patrick Scott. I can kind of see the resemblance yeah, a little I mean, bit. We look almost alike. Almost alike, indeed. Scott holding on to the ropes. One fall will win this contest as Ryan soars, and in comes Ian Maxwell out of the George South Pro Wrestling School. Once again, four representatives from four of the top training facilities in the Carolinas, and Ian Maxwell is on fire. Just like George South back in the day. Very similar. All three to the outside. Ian Maxwell may look to fly here. And this kid's very sudden. Yes, he is. Again, one fall will win this thing. So a quadruple count out basically uh, gets no one to the pay window and gets no one noticed by our CWF worldwide audience. Yeah, basically just wastes everybody's time. Cover. And uh, we have, this is our, actually our second time getting a look at Cam Carter on Worldwide. He was actually once heavily recruited by Coach Gemini himself. Chappie's cousin. Yeah. I remember him. Mm. Oh, boot to the face. Well, actually, a uh, fight on the outside. Woo! Jacob Ryan giving it to Patrick Scott on the outside. This will be scramble style. No tags are needed. When you leave the ring, it constitutes a tag. 
So referee Red Jones has got four incredible young athletes to keep up with. Very stiff drop kick. And we got a cover in the ring. And Maxwell almost got the win here. And this thing is going to, like you said, going to be rampant fire. Just four kids making a name for themselves. Jacob Ryan coming in on Ian Maxwell. Ryan may be the man who has the biggest reputation here in this part of the state. Cover two as that USIWF training camp is very centrally located to the Middle Atlantic Sportatorium. A lot of our regular fans may have seen more of Jacob Ryan than they have the other three. Cam Carter, though, puts the knee right in the sternum of Jacob Ryan into the cover, only two. And you see the anatomy of a Cam Carter, you see that leg is very lean, that knee kind of sticks out more than it would on another man. Very, very stiff knee drop. Basically bone on bone for that knee right. drop. Nice dunk there by Ryan, good defensive move. Ryan pitches him to the outside. Now anyone can declare themselves legal at this point, or Ryan could take to the skies here. Yeah, Ryan's gonna fly. Soars onto both oh. Tim Carter and Patrick Scott. They got caught up in the brawl and weren't paying attention. But oh. eyes on Ian Maxwell in the ring. Maybe the fastest man in this match from what I've seen. He's gonna get a head start. Cam Carter in the ring though. Nice front kick to the chest. Yeah, right in the sternum. That will affect your ability to breathe and do anything else. Oh, tubing a heel for Cam Carter. Good Lord, all four of these men letting it all hang out in this huge opportunity to be seen by our worldwide audience. Maxwell, will he finally take flight? Yes, he does. Oh, no hands. Unbelievable athleticism from four of the Carolinas' top prospects. Man, Ian Maxwell is so impressive here tonight. And I think, honestly, going back to Carter's time, I think he landed kind of rough on that. He came up very gingerly. Yes, he did. And Patrick Scott, who hasn't seen a lot of in-ring time tonight. No, definitely kind of the most arrogant man in this one. And he's immediately trying to get back out of the ring. Maxwell got the foot. Scott, oh, nice and security. Cover, but Cam Carter is right there in these multiple man matchups. You have to keep your head on a swivel and be aware of your surroundings. Yeah, kind of a double-edged sword. You gotta go for the win, but you also gotta be, like you said, be aware of your surroundings. Bodies are everywhere, and again, this is scramble rules. Now, theoretically, only two men should be in the ring at a time, but referee Red Jones has no real rules to enforce here. Right, just count the pin. Maxwell fighting off both men here. Maxwell may be the man who is the most comfortable on the top rope. Oh! No hands! Okada style drop kick. Beautiful vertical lead there. Yeah, it was. This Cam Carter is a phenomenal athlete. Out of the nearby Firestar Pro Wrestling Academy, Scott going up to meet him. Hold on, Ryan's back in. Ryan may take advantage and it's every man for himself. We may go up the tower here. Oh, Tower of Doom and Ian Maxwell ate all of that. All four crash and burn and anyone can be covered with these scramble style rules. Cover to Maxwell. That's a smart cover. <laughs> yes, it was. I think he took the worst of it. Yep, pivot right to Patrick Scott. If anyone is down for the three count, Jacob Ryan will win this thing. Carter trying to pull himself up. Two, only two. I think that might have been a little bit of a waste of time on the part of Jacob Ryan. Cam Carter was already looking how to pull himself up. I would have gone for something else before I went for that cover, but it's easy for me to say that in the booth and not in the heat of the moment like Jacob Ryan. Right, you instinctively want to go for the cover on everybody. Ryan going for Scott here. No, caught him. Patrick Scott with those long arms. That reach advantage just caught Jacob Ryan. Ryan. We're trying to make something happen here. Gonna go back to it. Hold on, Cam Carter gonna fly with that neckbreaker. Man, that turned out great for Cam Carter. He took out two guys at once. Yes, it did, and anyone is eligible to be beaten at this point. Oh, Carter's gonna take a big chance here. He's gonna take a big, big chance here as Cam Carter. Yeah, we know he's got the leap. What's he got up there? Man, went for a Phoenix Splash and found nothing in the pool. Oh, man, crashed and burned into the canvas did Cam Carter. Everyone is down. Who will take advantage? Ian Maxwell. Man, I don't know what he's going for, but Carter pushed off. Reversal. Oh, inverted DDT. Face first right into the canvas. Maxwell.
Angelo looking around to see who's alive. Who's a, oh, leaping knee. Time is taken away for all four of these top prospects. Yeah, went to the gut there. What's he got? Just a knee trimble, and he took Patrick Scott out of his boots. Less than two minutes remain in our 10 minute time limit for these four amazing athletes. Will anyone break free from the pack here? Yeah, one of them's gotta make something happen. You wanna get noticed, you got a minute and a half to do it. <clears throat> no, didn't get him. Carter. 90 seconds away. Woo, caught him with the knee. Yeah, very sure to go to sleep. I don't know if he got all of it, but he got enough. Can Carter can't go for the pin. Oh, he rolled out. What a bad break. He can't go for the pin because he's got to watch to see if anybody else is coming back up here. Time is ticking away here. Time is ticking away for all four of these athletes. Maxwell coming in on Carter. Oh, Chuck Dinsgurry went a little too high. Yeah, he never pulled that knee pad up. Cam Carter is owning the ring right now. Everyone is down. This is a huge opportunity for him. Yeah, but if he's going to do it, he's going to hurry up. Nice Patrick three. Scott caught him from the Carolinas Wrestling Academy. Patrick Scott woo, caught Cam Carter and planted him cover. And he beat him. The student of Steve Carino, Patrick Scott, stands tall in this fatal four-way with four of the Carolina's top wrestling training centers all going at it. Nine minutes, 24 seconds. Your winner by pinfall, Patrick Scott. Hey guys, Matt, Nick Jackson here, The Young Bucks. You are watching CWF Worldwide, but you actually should be on ProWrestlingTees.com slash Young Bucks. We've got like 54 designs. Pick one of the coolest ones. Too sweet. Too sweet me. Boom. He's taking his time. He's in no hurry. 
He, the fans, you know, they can hurl all their insults they like at him. He doesn't care. He's still the sharpest and the richest man in CWF Middle Atlanta. He is. Look at him. I, I, what an uppercut. You know, he, he worked on that punch. He studied, uh, understand he was studying Rocky, right. the film Rocky, and he, he went in there and he went into the meat shop and was just banging that meat, just banging it left and right until he developed that uppercut that he can just knock people out now one punch. Nobody trains harder than he does, coach, except Roy. Roy is the best. We all know that. I'm looking forward to that match later on today. So am I, so am I. Should be good. Dirty Daddy, we're going we're gonna to show Dirty Daddy who's the dirtiest in this wrestling business. He should have retired in the 80s when he had a chance. Look at Ethan. He has avoided Nick Richards, has been uh, unable to even lay a hand on him. That's how great Ethan A. Sharp is. He can't even lay a hand on him. He outsmarts every opponent. Look at, listen to these fans trying to say he's a chicken, please. They don't realize, they, they just don't recognize the brilliance behind the strategy. That's that's always the case, you know, with super intelligent people. These common people around here, the, these gifts of ill folk, they show up here, they, this, it's a whole nother level of intelligence they just can't grasp. Well, Nick Richards finally able to execute a maneuver with the arm twist. He's gonna crank it again there. Oh. I think he can, ah. Oh yeah, there you go. Punch him in the gut. Oh yeah, punch him again. See, wrestling is not your strong suit. You better fight me. See, fight. That's Ethan A. Show. What a tough guy. He's so tough. He'd rather fight. Oh, Richards with an arm ringer and then crashing the arm over his shoulder. Inflict additional pain and suffering on E. Oh, E. A. Sharp. Look out. Got an arm bar now, sharp down to the mat, but you know, he's so smart, he's so conniving, he's working on an escape right now. Him in, just yeah, him in it, a it's bit. totally his plan right now, he's working. There he is, in the ropes. It, that's a rope break, ref, come on. Come on, ref, that's a slow count. See, this is why I should be coaching him at ringside, make sure that referee's right. doing his job. Nick Richards. Hurling insults again, just like these fans. That's all, fans. Is. That's all uh -oh. it is. He's got a waist lock. No, sir. EA Sharp working on the escape right now. A little leverage there on the wrist. Break him loose. He's got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, you just grab the rug. I mean, that's a lot easier anyway. Look, Sharp. You know, I, I can see right now, I can just see him plotting. Oh look, he, oh. He, he's the heck with wrestling. He's wants to fight. What a fight. tough, what a tough guy yeah. EA Sharp is. <laughs> you know, he hit him right in the right. ear. Yeah, he knocked, he knocked his equilibrium, and that's why he went down. What a but, dirty, what a dirty move by Nick Richards. And now this referee's letting us go. Just pulling his hair, oh, punching him. Oh, oh come on. on. Look at this. The referee just lets Nick Richards do anything he wants to do. <laughs> Shot. That hurt. You know, I noticed these Gibsonville people can actually count to 10, which is shocking. I was surprised by that also. Uh, Look at that shark. So smart. Using his brain. His brain is a is a, a weapon of mass destruction. Did you know that? He had to be licensed. His brain is so he's so intelligent. He did. Nick Richards now trying to knock some of that smarts out of his head. That's okay. He's got so much he wouldn't even miss him. That's true. That's true. EA Sharp. Now he's just he's look at this playing possum. What a perfect possum player he is. Oh! I heard a shock the monkey, but that was kicked the possum right there. Oh, another one. Come on, EA. Use your superior intelligence oh, right now to counteract. Right yes, yeah, there we go. He figured it out the angle. He was so good in geometry. Oh, look at this. Oh, just, he's scratching an itch. Look at that, he's just scratching an itch. That happens to me all the time. That's good wrestling right there. Oh, yeah. Fixing the mustache. All right, yep. Got to get good for that, that photo finish. There you go. Got to get a good look for the cameraman. Oh, yeah. We'll get a new promo picture out of this right here. The day EA Sharp submitted Nick Richards.
What a – this is a fantastic this, – this, wow. this night just keeps getting better. Look at the streak of Ethan Allen. He's done. I mean, there's no out. You know how many sit-ups you know sit EA Sharp does a day? How many coaches? He's never going to break. He started 1,500 before he gets out of bed. Wow. Wow. No. Oh, what is that? Nick Richards, he, he got lucky, I think. Oh, no, he's going to counter. Oh, into the pin. Come on, EA, come on. Oh, he Woo. kicks out. There you go. Woo. Strong kick out. That is a very Vicious difficult, knee. very difficult uh, pinning maneuver to get, get kick out of. That's impressive. Just in that by itself. Yeah. EA Sharp, what a great wrestler. And not just because he pays up. Right. Exactly. I mean, I don't have any problem disclosing that. As, as uh, you know, board members of Moneyball give a lot of dividends exactly. every month. Get off this foot. But even if he hadn't made us very wealthy, he would still be a really good wrestler. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at that. Oh, he's, got sharp. he's got it locked in right there. He's got it. I'm pretty sure he gave up right there, referee. That's, that's the sharp mission. His mission is for Nick Richards to pass out, and it looks like it's going to happen. Oh, he's fading, Coach. Keep it, keep it tight. Fading. Keep it tight. He's fading. He's fading. You got him. You got him, EA. You know, I'm pretty sure he'll take us out to state tonight. Oh, oh, if he wins I'm this match. forward to that. It'll be on the company card. You know how they go. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Is this on? He's got it. Uh, no, it looks like Nick Richards may have slipped out of it because he's so slimy. No wonder he slipped out of it. Yeah, EA wasn't quite ready. Oh, oh, oh what a close oh. Oh, Brutal. Hover. Oh, oh, no, no. Come on, EA. Look at this. <laughs> Come on, get him out of the corner. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. There we go. There we go. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired of seeing this incompetence by the referee. You know, we got a, a world-class competitor in there, EA Sharp. And look how much faster he counts. I know. When, when, when Nick Richards is in the corner. I mean, it's so obvious the bias in this match. But, you know, EA Sharp, despite that fact, is going to come out victorious. Goodness. Spins in the round. Launches him into the ropes. Oh, clothesline over the top. This is ridiculous. I can't let this go on. I, I, I don't. I don't, I I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Look at this. He's trying to jump off the side. That's, he shouldn't be allowed to do that. Yeah, we should not be allowed to do that. There you go. Oh, DDT. Right on the side of the ring. What a take look. That's it. Come on. Two. No. No, that was three. This referee's terrible. This referee's so terrible. Jerry, I'm glad you went out there and pointed out the fact that that was an illegal maneuver that Nick Richards was trying to do. You're not supposed to attack an opponent on the outside of the ring. You're just not supposed to do that. It's not the sportsman. We're all sportsmen. Oh, no. No. Thank you. No. Slipped on a banana peel. Yeah. Yeah. Fan yeah. threw it right oh, side. He slipped on a banana yeah. peel, and that's how he got it. That's very it's unfortunate. Like bringing bananas into the into it's the These fans are monsters. They're barbarians around here. Wow. I'm filing a protest, Ethan. I'm filing a protest. That's what I'm doing. As soon as we leave here, we're going to file a protest. That was completely illegal.
Mike, you can tell he's got a singular focus. He has to visit with a missing Dawson brother. Big Mike Mars out of the Commonwealth of Virginia, one of the top prospects from Jimmy Valiant's wrestling camp. Mm. Oh, he didn't go down. Oh, he did not. Very impressive physical stature from Mike Mars. How many people can get hit three times by Mecca and not go down? Man, he's gonna throw one of his own, and he staggered the big man. One half of the Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champions is having a tough time figuring out what to do against this big man. Mecca is accustomed to being able to throw around anybody, even those damn Dawson brothers, and Mike Mars thus far is standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Yeah, Mike Mars is a big, unconventional type wrestler. Oh, he may have dazed himself. Mecca may need a control of the lead. Yeah, he's got a reboot here. Mars, man, Mecca, he's shaking up here. Mars may be only being held up by the ring ropes there in the corner. Big man gonna charge, no sir. Yeah, he is gonna have a little bit of a quickness edge, not carrying quite as much weight as Mecca. Swing and a miss. Woo! Bear cross body. Good Lord, just smushed him too. Woo! Very impressive. I've seen Mecca Pitman with that. Well, that really is. How many guys are going to survive, what, 425 or so pounds Ish. flying at them like that? Mike Mars impressing in his Mid Atlantic Sportatorium debut. Yeah, man, he may, I don't know, it may be a matter of time. I think he's had the wind taken out of him. Black Bar Slam, no, sir. Mars, Mars. Has he got the beard? Mm. It was effective. Little dirty, but effective. Very dirty, not quite legal. Mm, leaping knee. Man, he's got some good aggressiveness. Yes, he does. Woo! Close line, he can't get the big man down. Mike Mars standing tall, but he cannot move this big man. 400 pounds, Cecil Scott, is this wise to try to get him out of the ring? No, not out of the ring, but maybe he didn't draw it up this way, but it worked out for him. Cover two, only got two. Very poor cover, though. Yeah, not enough body-to-body -body contact on that cover. That's 400 pounds that you've got to try to maneuver to the canvas for three seconds or longer. You better put every ounce of strength you have into it. No way. Suplex. White bars, I don't know. He, maybe he's trying to think outside the box or not trying to get out of it. Who knows? Woo! Face first into the canvas. Sometimes you face a bigger guy and don't realize how much you got to change up your offense. That's exactly right. Mike Mars, everything that he's accustomed to doing is not working here. He has gotten farther against Mecca than a lot of us thought, quite frankly, but you're right. You got to change it up. Those big power moves are not going to work against the big man. And that, I, honestly, has turned into the story of this match. Mecca is in the driver's seat. One half of the Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champions is hungry for a W here. Oh man, Mars, he is on Dream Street. And there's your Black Force Slam. Stuck him dead center of the canvas. And got him.
Dolovos! 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 I love your burger! It's not burger! It's not burger! It's not completely different! It's completely different! Triple threat tag team action as Keith Mack ties up with Vinny Chinzo from Dojo Wars. Really unique mix of personalities in this one, Cecil Scott. You've got the team from Dojo Wars, Vinny Chinzo and Geoff Bravo. You've got the party boys, Keith Mack and Malachi Matthews. And you've got Donnie Dollars and the monstrous Otto Schwanz, who are 150% dead serious all the time no smiling no dancing no fun whatsoever yeah there is no party in that corner whatsoever in the absolute state of this match bravo or excuse me chinzo swung wild and keith mack right there with just a little uh, hip swivel action oh landed right on the tailbone there hey chinzo eats the canvas twice now he's in his own corner here might want to make a tag but keith mack wisely does not let it happen and tags into Malachi Matthews. I'm interested to see how much teamwork there is here between Keith Mack and Malachi. Uh, two fun-loving guys, but I kind of think they love a different kind of fun, if you know what I mean. Matthews actually explain it to me in detail. Putting a oh, oh, little bit of little bit of oh, dance. There you go. But a double elbow nonetheless. A little extra from the party star. And actually, I've heard some good things from this team from Dojo Wars. Uh, actually, we're vetted by our friend Emil J. I don't know if I'd call Emil J my friend, but you can. Ooh, if you want to. Bravo. He's actually, my nemesis. It's a kick. That could be all right there. Matthews going for the win immediately, but could not hold him down. That was great thinking on the part of Malachi Matthews. As he was going for the win right there, almost had him. And this is Bravo. He came in. He's got the cover here on Malachi. Very rugged start to this match from every team involved. We know Donnie kind of tagged out immediately. They haven't been involved yet. Bravo and Shinzo, a full-time tag team up in Dojo Wars. Oh, just dropped his partner. Malachi might be puking something up here. And look at Schwann. Good God in heaven. Otto's just going to go on a killing spree here. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. What set this guy off? Ethan Sharp is emancing an army on the outside. And man, he has recruited a hell of a soldier in auto, just like a cyborg, just marched in the ring. Good night. He's trying to, I don't know, is he reaching for a tag? Would Red Jones allow that tag on the foot like that? Matthews has been compromised in the ring. He did not make whatever he was attempting. Malachi drops down in the jawbreaker. Yeah, nice defensive move there. He's still in between his partners. He's a long way from his partner. Mm. He's almost reached out and punched him in the jaw there. Yeah, less of a clothesline and more of just a punch. Hey, whatever works, works. I see Bravo is directing traffic on the outside. That's the second or third time that Shinto has gone for the tag. Bravo said no, stay in, keep moving. Oh, and they may have just lost the advantage. Yeah, the two veteran team uh, and that team over there, Donnie and Otto, I think they've seen enough. Really curious as to what exactly Ethan Sharp is putting together this, quite frankly, super team. We have seen Otto Schwanz, we've seen number men, we've seen an association with the All-Stars. Sharp is up to something as he just continues to acquire basically, uh, like I said, just, just soldiers. And, and they are becoming increasingly motivated, just mindless violence. Otto Schwanz just stomping the guts out of anything that moves, see bear Man, Otto just seems extra turned up tonight. And you're right, Ethan Sharp, you know, money talks. And he's been throwing it around for the better part of two years. 
Malachi Matthews has been seriously compromised, and man, he has taken a beating. We may have seen the end of Malachi Matthews in the next couple of minutes. Mm, Come Otto, on. Otto is just murdering the guy right now. Pure violence from Otto. Yeah, Malachi, he's got to start getting dirty here if he wants a chance. He's got to go to the eyes or something. Good Lord, Schwann. Huge backbreaker. Watch the splash. Watch out for the splash. Oh! Matthews has taken a tremendous beating. Man, that stiff Otto Schwann splash. Basically, everyone in the match that is not his partner has got their hands on Malachi Matthews at some point in this match. Cover. Mm. Honestly, if Otto had not just stood up, I think he would have pinned him with that. Right. I don't know if Bravo could have broke up that pin if he'd have made it in time. Donnie Dollar's tagged in. Very much a man without a country at this point. And but he's taking a payday here nonetheless. Pump handle slam, perhaps. Oh, God. Stuck him with it. Oh, but he backed up for the boot and it cost him. And the team from Dojo Wars have both tagged in. Now, how will the referee enforce that? Man, I don't know. Oh, this did. That's the second time he's used his partner as a weapon. Oh, man, it's breaking down here. Yeah, back to House of Fire right now. Up goes Bravo. Mac and Shinzo have declared themselves legal. No, did not get it. Ooh. Mac loves that sky high. Shinzo did not let him have it. And everyone is down now. Who will be the first one to take an advantage here? I can't believe Malachi Matthews is still fighting. Yeah, he took so much punishment and goes to the eyes. Double team move here. Woo! Almost a assisted cover clutch into a Russian leg sweep. Making the sign for the five guys stable. Oh dear. Donnie's got both men. Well, too much five guys will leave you flat after a while. Keith Mack fires up on Donnie Dollars. Remember, one fall will win this matchup. Oh, the Donnie boot. Oh, dear. Brain scrambler. Oh, he may have just scrambled the brains of Keith Mack. And that is all. Oh, God. This team of Schwanz and Dollars not even taken off their feet here. Not even taken off their feet. Man, and they've got to control all those swans. Man, they, he's a more of a maniac than ever. Talk to 
you in that way? Collar and elbow tie up. Really interested to see this one. Cecil Scott, the youngest vet in the biz. Dirty Daddy going one on one against maybe the all around best Roy Wilkins. What a test for 2016's most improved wrestler, courtesy of IndianSiders.com, the former RGL champion, the Dirty Daddy. Really testing his medal here against one of the best we've ever known. Yeah, I can't. I can think of very few people that can match technical skill. We got a beautiful roll up, just proving my point there. Very few can match technical skill with Roy Wilkins. It's not just the technical skill, though. It's the little things that you never really think about unless you've been inside the ring or been around this great sport. Controlling the tempo, controlling your opponent at all times. You will see if Wilkins gets in the driver's seat, you will see that he almost will never let Dirty out of his physical grasp. He will control his opponent. He will control the tempo and the pace of the match like no other. So many men throughout the course of CWF Mid-Atlantic history have been mentored by Coach Jim and I, but none have been taught every trick of the trade, like Wilkins, like that right there. Right, and I was about to point out that even, uh, just to kind of hang on what you just talked to, Roy Wilkins controls the pace in such a manner that even if Dirty or any other opponent starts to gain offense, you still get the sense that they are exactly where Roy Wilkins wants them. That he's still controlling them, and they're, they're in an offense that's, that's what he wants, where he can control things. And right now, this is exactly the pace that Wilkins wants. And honestly, I I don't want to be... Uh, oh, it's over. Hold on. Shoulders yeah. down. Go ahead, see bear I don't want to be hyperbolic, but I think right now, Roy is better than he's ever been. Ever since that, and that he came back after that loss to Trevor Lee, he took so many months off. He's come back, and I feel like the Roy Wilkins of today would smoke the Roy Wilkins of two years ago. Well, you can attest to it, Cecil Scott. When you maintain a full, busy schedule like that, your body never gets any chance to heal. You know, you're constantly on the grind. Even if you only wrestle at CWF Mid-Atlantic, you're talking 35 to 40 matches a year, only 52 weeks in a year, so there's very little downtime. So when you're able to take a long six month chunk of time out like that, your body heals up, your mind, just everything about your whole style that may have been worn down and feeling the grind, you come back refreshed, mind, body, and perhaps even soul here. Right, and just to kind of give it, oh, you got that from my water slide. I'll come back to my point in a moment. It's a no. big move for Wilkins to go for early. Dirty did not let him have it. And Dirty, to his credit, nice roll up. Shoulders are down. He has actually done a good job of hanging with Roy so far in this match. He's had a few really good counters. But to kind of to further expand your point, Generally speaking, if you can help it, it usually takes at least four or five days for your body to recover from the average wrestling match. Now imagine you wrestled for 105 minutes. To, to not just physically, but mentally recover from that. And from such a long battle and such a heartbreaking loss. But you're on the grind, you know, at least once a week. Your body never recovers. And he took, what, eight months off. Took that cruise that seemed to go around the world eight or nine times. A normal 30 minute time limit mid-Atlantic title matchup. Wilkins had more than, what, three of them. Uh, a, ten, a 10 minute television time limit match. Wilkins had almost 11 of them. Right. In one sitting, you're 100% right. I think you're right. I think it was one of the wisest moves of Wilkins' career to take that time off, to let his body recover. That was a Coach Gemini. Well, yeah. Coach has always imparted all these men to work strong, not hard. Dirty, firing off. Man, Dirty Daddy has a very underrated right hand, and there's that brilliant defensive wrestling. Oh, man, the top rope caught Dirty and sent him tail end over tea kettle to the canvas. Wilkins, so smart and so smooth. I've harped on it so many times when Wilkins wrestles, nobody knows how to make the mid-match adjustment quite like Roy Wilkins. Mm. Wilkins hammering down. And Daddy, he had a really strong showing early on, but I kind of feel like Wilkins is going to start going to work here. And the coach 
choking Dirty Daddy on the floor. This is what we were talking about. This is Wilkins controlling the pace, controlling the tempo. Look at that goofball Jerry Carey doing the blocking on the outside for the coach. Where do you even get pants like that? Mm. The kids section. God. I don't even want to think about Jerry Carey hanging out with kids section. Fair point. Oh, and right to the back. Perfect placement. The hardest part of the ring. Roy Wilkins knew exactly where to drive Dirty Daddy right into that hardest part of the canvas. Wilkins is chasing people out of the Middle Atlantic Sportatorium. Oh, we already got their money. But we talked about this with Kane Justice where he stays hyper-focused on the arm throughout his match. Wilkins is so good at taking whatever the match presents. It seems to always have a game plan that could suit whatever is presented to him, whether it be the back or the arm or the legs. And that knee just caught Dirty right in the face. Oh, beautiful right hand. And it seems like Wilkins is focused on the back in the midsection tonight. This is a monumental test for the youngest bet in the biz. Yeah, he has faced very few the caliber of a Roy Wilkins. Quite frankly, there are very few the caliber of Roy Wilkins. Yeah, we, we've seen him, you know, put up a hell of a fight against people like the Dawsons. He's fought, but he's never had to try to out-wrestle somebody. And Wilkins, he's not going to let you out-fight him. It's just really not an option. Crowd here is on the case of Roy Wilkins and the coach. Wilkins stomping away. Everything Wilkins does serves a purpose. And the coach is just extra riled up here tonight. And again with the right hands, Dirty going with what brought him to the dance here. Yeah, Dirty is trying to make this a stand-up fight as best he can. Oh, look at Wilkins, though. But he didn't come back with the right hand. Slicker than human oil was Wilkins right into that abdominal stretch. Yeah, he didn't come back to try to trade blows. He hooked a hole, immediately hooked a hole. And look how deep he's got that in. Dirty trying to free himself here. Dirty trying to free himself, and he does. Roy Wilkins hits the canvas. Very good defensive move there. But Dirty's got to stay on him. Coach is calling for a timeout. Wilkins is trying to create space. Is this a mistake here on the part of Dirty Daddy? No. Oh, he hooks oh. the forearm right into the face. Oh, Roy, you got to watch out for the forearms. A stand-up fight just made favor Dirty Daddy. Oh, and again, the defensive wrestling by Wilkins, second to none. Oh, watch out. Shining wizard. Oh, my God. Good Lord, Wilkins just soars. He soars with the shining wizard and just like that, cover. This one, ooh, I was going to say it might be over. Wilkins may be better than anyone in the game at not just controlling but changing the pace. Absolutely. He's going to go right back to that back. Coach felt like that should have been three. That shining wizard, such a game changer. And now shift and focus to the legs, maybe think it's seventh inning stretch. Could be, that seventh inning stretch has tapped out a lot of men. And we'll also see Wilkins on occasion use the STF to step over toe hold face lock that was the favorite hold of Coach Gemini until it was adapted by Trevor Lee in that 105 minute match. Yeah, and it's been Trevor Lee's go-to ever since. Wilkins also loves the figure four. But yeah, that seventh inning stretch is really his ace card. Man, Dirty almost lost his footing, man. Very lucky he caught Wilkins. Woo! Oh, nice flying forearm. Dirty has had his best luck with his hands here. But he landed out corkscrew elbow. That's right, I this said it. Dirty going for the figure four. Shades of the nature boy. Yeah, not a bad hold to go for here. He's got it hooked in good. Wilkins is trapped here. This is the first time that Dirty has taken it to the mat. Oh, and the coach going to the eyes. Coach on the eyes. Coach on the eyes. That goofball Jerry Carey had the distraction. Coach went to the eyes. Oh, Dirty is swinging. Right back to the knee. Right back to the knee. It might be time to hook it in. No, he's going for the figure four. Wilkins has him trapped. Dead center of the ring. Wilkins has dirty trapped. Dead center. Wilkins has got that flag with the assist from the flag. And Dirty gave it up with the assist from the flag. Wilkins has won it with the assist from the flag. That added pressure. Dirty is hurt after the clip to the knee. It took the assist from the coach.
for Wilkins to leave with the W flying. And you win Championship that these people would get to make the decision. Well, as you can see, I'm here and I'm ready to defend my television championship. The problem is, I'll be damned if these people are going to choose my challenger. So I tell you what, I'm going to give these guys in here a golden opportunity, and instead of challenging for the Rising Generation League Championship, tonight, after this battle royal is over, the winner can challenge for the Television Championship. That's what I'm saying. This is for my title. quickly. Cecil Scott bodies are flying. The winner, the last man standing, will face television champion Eric Andrews right here tonight on CWF Worldwide. That's a great idea the champ had. How generous is the television champion willing to defend against anybody, rookie or veteran, anybody. How generous is it of the worldwide television champion, Eric Andrews, to be willing to put the title on the line against anybody, from rookies to veterans? I applaud your courage, sir. I applaud the guts of the television champion willing to defend against not just any rookie, but any potential contender. And they say he's not a fighting champion. I applaud your courage, sir. They say he's not a fighting champion. 
We've got about 20 potential contenders from all walks of life. Right here. This is a bunch. Of, it was just supposed to be the people in there. Brad doesn't understand that. Now we got a plethora of, of people in there. Nick Richards is in the ring in street clothes. Bodies are flying everywhere faster than we can keep up with. Yeah, we're, no way we're going to be able to call all of this until it starts, you know, kind of whittling down a little bit. Movie Mike, maybe the most arrogant RGL competitor on the roster, and that's really saying something on a roster that includes Kane Justice. Yeah, it's no shortage of, of confidence. Oh, Mike Mars to the floor and crashes down. Yeah, Mike. He wants to say, it's right here, brother. I'm going to eat it. I am going to eat it. I'm going to eat a sandwich. Don't tell him. Sounds like a personal situation between y'all two. We're homies. So once again, the winner, the last man standing, will face television champion Eric Andrews in this hour of CWF Worldwide. Good Lord, it's a massive humanity. It really is. It's oh, Richards is gone. I don't know if our cameras caught it or not, but Donnie Dollars just eliminated Nick Richards right here by us. Richards, who literally jumped at the chance for a shot at the television title. Yeah, he was trying to go ahead and stockpile another championship match in addition to his Weaver Cup title opportunity. Daddy's out. Dirty Daddy eliminated. Donnie Dollars is protecting Ethan Sharp in that corner, and he has done an excellent job thus far. Is Ethan in the fetal position? Yes, he is. Ethan Sharp has attached himself to that bottom rope and bottom turnbuckle. You don't see the road dog strategy used that often. No, you do not. Good Lord. Eric Andrews has taken refuge up on the stage where he is hiding behind cameraman Grant Sawyer, trying to get a look, a scouting report, if you will, on who his next challenger might be. Yeah, he loved this idea when it was a ring full of RGL guys. Oh, no! Not even the offer of a sandwich can stop the Mecca Mercenary. He chopped him right in the life of the party. The frying pan, please don't win that. Please don't win. Oh, no. Oh, poor Cool J. Oh, Cool J may be about to hit the skies here. Kane Justice, the Rising Generation League champ, getting a shot in. In all seriousness, who's going to get rid of a guy like Donnie Dollars or Mecca Mercenary at this point? Right, that would certainly seem like the safe money for our final two. And if I'm Eric Andrews, I don't want to face either one of them. Keith Mack is gone. Keith Mack will not get another opportunity at the television title. I think the party's over for Keith Mack. Is Ethan Sharp trying to buy his way out of a beating for Mecha Mercenary? I think he is. I don't know if Ethan Sharp was ever even in this matchup. Oh, oh God! Oh, Sharp hits the floor! Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Oh, no. Oh, no. Mecha. oh, Mecha Mercenary tossed out! Eric Andrews is loving it! Eric Andrews is loving that Mecha Mercenary was just eliminated from this thing! Oh, Dollars has got Wes Rogers and Mario Jones. Hold on! Donnie's out! Donnie, Donnie Dollars and Mega Mercenary both eliminated. Now it really is anyone's matchup. We just said those are the two favorites. I believe the two biggest men in this match. And even look around the landscape. Oddly enough, all the veterans have been eliminated. Right, we're back. Oh, Kane Justice is gone. Kane Justice eliminated by Donnie Ray from the Carolina Wrestling Academy. Woo, movie Mike charges in on Tahir James. Yeah, this, is fun. this is the way it should have been to begin with. All these people getting in there trying to get my television fire. Representatives from what about half a dozen wrestling facilities all around us. Cool J dives. Mario Jones is eliminated. Down to, I believe, seven men. What? Oh, Cool J takes a nasty spill. There goes Cool J. 
down to six or five. To hear James looking for an elimination on the far side. Donnie Ray going to help him. Man, some nasty falls in this thing. And there goes Donnie Ray. We are down to four. We are down to four. Movie Mike, Slim Dre, Wes Rogers, and Tahir James from the Combat Zone Wrestling Dojo. One of these four men will challenge for the Worldwide Television Championship mere moments away. So Eric Andrews has got his wish. It will be a relative rookie. It will be someone from the Rising Generation League that challenges him for the Worldwide Television title. Oh, oh Slim Dre! Slim Dre eliminated Movie Mike! He turned on him! He double crossed him! Down to two! Woo! Huge knee! Wes Rogers is gone! And to hear James win a season, Andrews from behind! James wins! And we're gonna start this thing right now! To hear James from the CZW Dojo just got absolutely pearl harbored by Eric Andrews. It is one on one here, and the bell has sounded. And Andrews charges. James just went through a chaotic battle royal and just got jumped from behind. He fought through 15 or 16 people, did Tahir James, one of the top prospects from Dojo Wars and the Combat Zone Wrestling Dojo, about two years a pro. This is actually one of the men that contacted the CWF Mid-Atlantic offices and said, hey man, uh, what do I gotta do? How do I gotta get an opportunity? And man, he has gotten a golden opportunity here by being the last man standing in this battle royal. Carver, only a count of one. This young man showing his toughness. Yeah, sometimes you gotta treat that mat like it's on fire and just jump right back off of it when you get covered. And he, he just proved positive that sometimes you just gotta burn the phone up and get on the emails and get yourself on a show because you never know what kind of opportunity you're gonna get. Right, this young man came here today expecting, quite frankly, an opportunity befitting of a rookie. He's got an opportunity that men wait years and spend years of their career hoping for. Right, and point of reference, I actually never, ever, ever fought for the television championship. You were a pro, what, 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. I never fought for this title, so it's not an easy opportunity to get. Mm. But Eric Andrews, he is a veteran, he's big, and he's strong, and he's ornery. And he's telling James to stay down. This young man showing a lot of toughness, a lot of tenacity. Oh! Andrews working on the lower back. He loves that full Nelson slam, the asphalt spike. It drops you on your head, your neck, and your lower back. It sends shock waves all up and down your spine. Does the asphalt spike? Yes, it does. It hurts every bit of that body, and it can drop it from a long way down. But Eric Andrews has the luxury. Honestly, if he wants, We've talked about it before, he may just stretch his seat to the 10 minute time limit. Right, that's the whole advantage of the television champion. He gets that 10 minute time limit to play with. And quite frankly, the sense of urgency is on the challenger to beat the champion and not the other way around. Right, absolutely, and Andrews has the benefit of not having wrestled already. Nice backdrop suplex. Yeah, I will say, uh, Two fingers on the chest, I don't know about all that. I will say Andrews coming out here basically trying to weasel his way out of the fans' choice for the television title may pay dividends because he may live to fight another day here on CWF Worldwide. This young man has fought through over a dozen other men to earn this opportunity and now the champ is just absolutely controlling the pace, controlling the tempo. The champ has been in the driver's seat since the bell rang. Right, and you know this is what Andrews wanted from the start. He was trying to manipulate the system. And look at Tahir James fight back. Yes, he is. Kid's got to show some fire, and he's doing it. What an underdog story. Oh, face first into the second turnbuckle. Can you imagine the story that this would be if Tahir James could pull off this upset? A relative unknown. Two years in the sport, 
competes primarily at Dojo Wars, a student of the CZW Academy. First time ever in the Mid-Atlantic. First time ever in the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium. First time ever wrestling in the South. And man, what an opportunity here. Worldwide cameras are watching. Eyeballs all over the globe are on this broadcast and this championship match. Shoulder block cannot take the big man down. Shoulder block, nothing. Yeah, he's gotta keep going though. Drop kick right into the cover, right into the cover. Oh, he almost surprised him. What a move. I don't know if it was on purpose or a lucky break, but he almost surprised the champion. Man, even photographer John Moses had to look at me on that one, man alive. He nailed the drop kick sword right into the cover and he almost beat him. Man, but Andrews, to his credit, cut him right back off. Yeah, Andrews has focused his attack. Eric Andrews is thinking asphalt spike. And I don't know if this is quite the cakewalk Andrews wanted. He's getting a fight. Yes, he is. Woo! Drop kick stuns the champion. And this Dan James has actually got some good range to him. He's able to extend out. Samoan drop. Samoan drop right into the cover. Two. Only got two. To hear, some good power there. To hear must understand that time is of the essence. Yeah. He must stay on the champion. I hope this young man is familiar with the television title rules. He must stay on the champion. He's taking a long time to set up something here. Oh, and he paid for it. Yeah, he might have just been in survival mode. Ass false fight. Right on the back of his head. Andrews retains the Worldwide Television Championship. Almost a Cinderella story here, but the Worldwide Television Champ stands tall. You're gonna get hurt. Five minutes, 40 seconds, you win by pinfall. Andrews Andrews is
Scott, what an electric atmosphere in the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium for our main event this week. The veteran, the bruiserweight, the Southern Savior, John Schuyler, goes one-on-one -on -one against the explosive rookie, Snooty Fox. And if Schuyler takes this young man lightly, I dare say he will pay for it. Right. Oh, God, he just took a boot to the face of him. And that was a long two. Schuyler may have been surprised in the early going here. First minute of the match and Skyler has already got his bell rung. Yeah, I think he, maybe he is taking this, this young man lightly. And we've seen Snooty Fox, he does have the capability to pull off an upset. Good Lord, he's taking him all the way up against the back wall of the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium. They may fight outside here. Skyler headed back to the ring. He is certainly going to be in his best interest for Skyler to keep this thing in the ring. A street fight really negates that experience edge that John Skyler has. A street fight, I got to believe Snooty Fox has got the advantage. Yeah, I believe you're absolutely right on that not to say Skyler can't fight as we're seeing right now but Snooty just has too much size too much strength to stand on that floor good lord the heavy hands of Snooty Fox just firing away on the southern savior and they're going out in the lobby Cecil Scott to the concession stand yeah I think they're going to wipe out concessions here Skyler is being bounced off every wall in the mid-atlantic sportatorium and Skyler, I don't think, realized that he was going to get this kind of fight. Damn, face first into the hardest part of the ring. Skyler's waving it off. He wants to go home. I mean, Skyler, this guy, he's, a, he's an actual top prospect. He's one of the most sought-after guys on the independent circuit today. Oh, Skyler choking Snooty. Yeah, he pulled one of the decals off of the ring post. Not going to do a lot of damage if you hit somebody with it, but just about anything can do damage when it's wrapped around the windpipe. Right, it's a magnetic strip, so it's got a good sturdiness to it. Crowd here in the Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium is 1,000% behind Snooty Fox. Like always. In this worldwide main event. Skyler taking a break, taking a sip of water. Needs to be careful. Just spits right in his face. Just insulting the man. And he better be careful. That may wake Snooty Fox up. And Red John's being very judicious with his count. Yeah, this is a huge opportunity for Snooty Fox against a world traveled competitor. No one wants to see this thing end in a double count out. Oh! He better be careful grabbing cuffs for some people over on that side of the ring. Oh, God. Spits it right in the eyes of the Southern Savior. Man, I don't think I expected this kind of match when this thing started. Again, I'll say it, this is a mistake. A street fight favors Snooty Fox. John Schuyler has got eight or nine years of professional wrestling experience ahead of Snooty. Schuyler needs to keep it in the ring. But if you recall, it was Snooty's very first match. He was able to pin the veteran's veteran himself, Otto Schwann. Snooty had a steam and he hits the post hard. I think he took it face first there. So Snooty does have the capability to pull off that kind of win. Positively correct. <laughs> it's Skyler wisely rolling back in the ring. I think he's more than content to take this count out at this point. Go ahead and get this thing over with if you're John Skyler. Yeah, Skyler encouraging the referee's count. Yeah, the pay's the same either way. Absolutely. He's looking to get out of this any way he can, any way he needs to. Man, we're up to an eight. He might get that count out. Count is at nine. Oh, on, Red Jones, his hand was dropping for ten. Yes, yeah, Snooty hit head first on the ring post, and Skyler just raining down punches on maybe the most popular. Maybe the most powerful rookie we have ever seen come out of the CWF Mid-Atlantic Dojo now in his sophomore year. But as you pointed out, Seabear, 
Snooty has beaten some veterans in the past. Still Otto Schwann, alongside Mecha Mercenary and Aaron Biggs, they beat the Dawsons. He has been in there with some amazing, amazing professional wrestlers. But man, there just there may be nobody that is as good across the board as John Schuyler. You want to talk about somebody that is almost perfect. You want to talk about somebody that's tens across the board. He can wrestle. He can fight. He can fly. He can get inside your head. He can dictate the pace of the match. John Schuyler right now is in the driver's seat. What does Snooty Fox have to do to turn this thing around? Well, first thing he's got to do is get off of his back. But he had the right idea at the start. He, he's got to make this thing ugly into a power match. Yes, Skyler is deceptively powerful, I know, because I fought him. But no one's going to match strength with Snooty Fox. It will be a huge win for Snooty Fox in his sophomore year as a pro if he defeats the Southern Savior. What does it do to the future, to the fate of John Schuyler to get defeated here by a wrestler in his sophomore year? Well, for a guy that's about to enter the Ring of Iron Top Prospect Tournament, a guy that's really got a lot of a lot of positive momentum, a loss of Snooty Fox, you know, to anybody outside the sport of tournament would be seen as a step back. You know, to us at CWF, we, we see it as Snooty Fox with a big win. But you go, you go to Twitter, you go to the message boards, they're going to say, man, Ty Skyler lost to a rookie. So that, I think in Skyler's mind, that's what he's looking at. Fox fires away. But Skyler, I think, right now is an underrated good game plan. It's not obvious, but he is trying to draw this match out a little bit. Yeah, the longer it goes, you're going to see Snooty Fox's cardiovascular conditioning come into play. He has not been drawn out in a long matchup like this yet. You're going to see how well he can hang. Big elbow. Still got some explosiveness in those legs. That's what you've got to watch if you're Skyler. You've got to watch that explosiveness. Snooty Fox will just burst into some powerful, powerful offense. Now, one thing about Snooty, he has such a strong will. He fights through the, through the exhaustion. Mm. Caught him right in the face. Oh, Skyler. Brilliant move. Very brilliant. You know, we just talked about it. The man's cardio is a question mark. Get on the man's back. Put him in a sleeper hold and test it even further. A lot of times you see Snooty Fox in tag team matches. A lot of times you see him utilized as the cleanup hitter. Right. The man that comes in at the end to maximize that explosiveness in a long main event singles match like this. This is exactly where Snooty Fox did not want to find himself. But if you're John Schuyler, you're right in your wheelhouse. This is exactly what you wanted. Positively, John Schuyler a pro since I believe 2008. Snooty Fox a pro since April of last year, so just under 12 months. And give you an idea of just how good Skyler is. It was just last year, less than a year ago, he took Trevor Lee to the limit and very nearly became the heavyweight champion. He was on one of those big Chapel Hill cards, so you've got to believe he has seen what Snooty Fox is capable of. I don't think he saw that coming. Mm. Oh, Skyler right back on top. Skyler right back on top. He will attempt to choke the life out of Snooty. And that's a veteran move. You'll see younger guys, if they lose a hold, they won't go back to it. Skyler not afraid to go back to the same hold. And a ref might want to get there and check that. That wrist looks a little suspect over the throat. See, with a sleeper, you can have the crook of the elbow around the chin. That's legal, but the wrist cannot go over the windpipe. Oh, that's two, that's two times on the arm. That's two times on the arm. Snooty may be fading. No, sir. No, sir. Snooty Fox still alive. Snooty Fox is still alive. Mid-Atlantic Sportatorium is cheering and chanting their encouragement. Now, to Skyler, is he going to try to keep laying on him, or is he going to let Snooty run himself out? Side slam. Cover two. That was a great thinking move from Snooty Fox, right into the cover, no wasted motion. Any effects of that sleeper hold, you can tell that Snooty has still got some of his uh, faculties about him mentally because he knew to go for the cover. Right, and he's been in the ring more, he's had more matches, and like we've talked about, that's the only way to build up that, that ring cardio. 
So we see more and more with each match. He could go further, and he's making better decisions. He has passed 10 minutes with the Southern Savior. Skyler! Oh, Snooty fires right back. And I feel like this might be a card of mistake by Skyler to turn it into a fist fight. I got to agree with you. I think Skyler will live and breathe on the mat here. Oh, and he can throw hands. But, man, you get rocked by Snooty a few times, and you want to change things up. Oh. Oh, he telegraphed it. Oh, Snooty. Snooty may have shaken the cobwebs from that sleeper out. Oh, God. And Snooty kind of changed it up a little bit. Very nice. Polish Hammer. Skyler is on the ropes, literally. Snooty, they dive with all that body weight. Resilient as they come, but Snooty's putting things together better than I've ever seen him do it before. Very much a trial by fire for this amazing young athlete. Snooty six months ago with the Oh no! You would not see this kind of awareness from Snooty six months ago. Snooty going to the ropes here. This is uncharacteristic of the big man. Oh! Keep it simple. Double legs. Cover. Two. Close. Man, that was close. Come on. They get closer. Each each count gets closer and closer. Snooty, maybe going for that huge power slam. He loves that Oklahoma Stampede style power slam. Oh, I think he's got him. He's not going anywhere. Oh, Skyler slipped from behind. Send him into the buckle. Send him into the buckle. Skyler's got the middle rope. Skyler's got the middle rope, and he beat him with the assist from the middle rope. Skyler beat. He had to go to the ropes. He had to bend the rules to survive this rookie. He survived this rookie any way he could, Brad Stutz. It was the veteran know-how that won it for the Southern Savior.